My topic is free market urban order and the productivity of information rich environments. I'm an architect, not an engineer. And for, for, for architects, in my reflection, we're in charge of social functionality rather than technical functionality, which implies that for us, a built environment, and for me, and I project it onto the discipline as a whole, is an information processing stratum, an interface of communication, basically. So, what the built environment does, I believe, in kind of dense mega cities, uh, industry hubs coming together densely, like the city of London. Uh, like uh, Silicon Valley, places like this, and it should become even more dense. And so the issue for, for us is, as architects, to make that work mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. unfold the complexity and richness of societal offerings of communication events in front of us and all around us in a kind of 360 degree um, interface of communications where things are above, below, and all around in layers and which each step that screen regenerates and of course, we also have things coming through this screen, but I'm thinking of the totality of the built environment which encompasses us as a kind of interface of communication. So not only, of course, we, it's about seeing real people, orienting, navigating, finding relevant partners of communication. But on top of this, I can imagine, and we've done sketches of this kind, that these, all these surfaces become themselves augmented screens, uh, steps into virtual environments. So I'm thinking of an overall 360 degree interface of communication augmented with, with entry points into virtual worlds, of course, as well as into real worlds, because this is a project in Beijing, for instance, where we have hundreds and hundreds of new startup companies uh, coming together, and this order of the exterior where we use curvilinearity and, and uh, is also a, a logic and ordering structure which moves on the inside, and many, many people and things come together in, in, these, in these spaces. And another project in Rome, for instance, where we're talking about these lines of connectivity uh, uh, feeding through the built environment, drawing people together, open our spaces, and this coherency of articulation uh, from the end exterior into the interior is a kind of navigation system for us, uh, orientation, where things become so dense, but through curvilinearity, through ordering principles, we prevent a kind of... Um, collapse into visual chaos. So this is, for instance, a library and learning center in, at the Economics uh, uh, University in Vienna. And for us, very important, these kind of uh, central communication spaces, orientation hubs. And this is the kind of space we're looking for, where, you, where at any point where you move through it, you see many, many different levels and layers and points and even into the exterior while you orient where you're navigating, because for, for me, the contemporary society is post for this network society, where we need to be in touch, networked with, with so many others who are working and doing things so that we calibrate what we're doing and recalibrate it every day with what everybody else is doing. We can't afford to be kind of chopped up into corridors and little cells and beaver away uh, without being aware of what everybody else is doing. That's why we need to open up spaces, create these atria, these connectivities. So for for, for what I believe is the built environment delivers is social order, the structuring of society, because there is no society without a built environment, with a settlement structure, which is evolving and allowing, first of all, to, to generate activities, routines, to differentiate personas and types of uh, players in society, and allow society to grow. The built environment is primarily that. It's not physical shelter, it's structuring, a structuring matrix and then and a kind of retrieval matrix also of navigating these built environment. And you can see if the, the way uh, cities build up and the way society becomes more complex, those uh, spatial constructs become more con uh, complex and they become ordering systems and principles which are also projected onto the moral information world and they become ordering structures as such. In the Renaissance we have the first time the, the, the conscious design of these social orders through architecture, through urbanism, initially only in concentrated points and then later also conquering the whole uh, uh, territory of, 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 of a nation state conceptually. So he this attempt to order and structure uh, uh, and bring under the spell of an architectural order the totality of, of, of a national space, for instance. And that becomes applied in the modernist era 
through mechanical systems of reproduction on a much, much larger scale and, and much more differentiated, uh, but still neatly separated, a business district, a residential district, an industry and logistics in, uh, district, kind of patching out, laying out. That's the era of modernism, where each is quite different but and internally repetitive. We are now in a much more different space where we actually have to mix and integrate and, and, and differentiate each of these layers. So they fuse and they're differentiated. So uh, we have these kind of organizational diagrams from the modernist era, and they become much more complex, layered, and networked. So where are we going? We are no longer live in this world. This was kind of covering the, the, uh, the face of the earth, and we are now in a world where we reject this, this kind of monotony of, of repetition and seriality, and we, we're getting something much more complex. We're moving from this world to a world which is integrated, dense, agglomerated, and that becomes quite quickly visual chaos, menacing visual chaos. It has more vitality as that kind of monotony of a few things, universal standards. So this is a kind of rich and exciting environment at the same time as kind of menacing because it generates that visual chaos of the garbage spill. It generates something which is kind of white noise sameness and lack of identity and orientation and navigation. And that's what is my challenge. And in architecture, this kind of world was kind of reflected in the style of deconstructivism. That's the kind of ideological image, let's say, or artistic translation of, of this urbanism into an architectural project. But that's very kind of nearly self-defeating. So if you look at the, this kind of cityscape of London, which is many, and there's no neatly constrained and ordered city body. It's just a kind of meandering, uh, cancerous outgrowth. And the only piece of... <laughs> which is kind of menacing, and it's the same wherever you go. This could be a picture of Shanghai, this could be a picture of Beijing, this could be a picture of, of Calcutta. It's all this kind of identity-less garbage spills uh, uh, menace. The only thing which gives order and structure is actually the order of nature, the river, its rhythm. And it's not just a highway, a straight line. You know? It has kind of rhythm, it, it, it has, a, has, a, has an asymmetry, it upstream, downstream, it, it structures the city. That's the only thing which gives structure. So we look at natural systems, of ordering systems, which are complex, rich, yet have ordering principles which you can kind of make inferences through and uh, create an urban environment which has the same intensity, uh, open-endedness, complexity, but it becomes a complex, navigable, variegated <laughs> order, uh, which kind of allows free market forces to flow through that and be structured if the discipline and profession knows how to grapple with this and pick up these logics and turn them into design strategies through algorithms and, and self-ordering, agent-based systems, etc. So these are the kind of models we are working with, uh, where all this complexity is here script-driven and has the richness uh, uh, but becomes kind of navigable because it's, 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 it's ordered. So instead of this neutral grid, we are able to differentiate the texture, create very, very different situations, but at the same time pick up and affiliate to existing context. So this is our model of uh, parametric architecture. So these are some of the master plans we're creating. And there's a sense where the rhythm of the skyline uh, is mirroring and resonating with the, with the plan, compression and opening up, and there's features, natural features embedded, etc. So these are just some models, uh, Istanbul, Singapore, Beijing, a Bilbao, where we have something which, which has the, the elegance and beauty of a natural environment, which is complex and which we can navigate because there's a, a well-ordered environment. So if you, if you go through an open landscape, you can see where the river is carving, where, where the topography is guiding, how the vegetation is correlating, so uh, where the east, south, and west are, because it makes a difference on, on the mountain edge. So all these laws of nature which structure and lawfully differentiate the, uh, natural environment, which makes that natural environment give identity, order, and navigability, I want to apply it to urban orders. And that's the kind of project. And these are the kind of models we generate and, and offer. And we're starting this on, on a building scale, as it's kind of research and development uh, hub and, and, and big projects. And uh, we are starting that with, with, with islands in the urban menace. This is, for instance, in Korea, a, a complex exhibition center with about 10 different entrances on different levels, uh, uh, in, in incorporating four museums, uh, exhibition centers, etc. And that's kind of an unusual, organic-driven architecture uh, where we also 
we use a kind of smart skin you see later to, to hide uh, a lot of what's going on and to focus the view on entrances and vistas and passages and a kind of new organic architecture. So we have, and that could have also feeds and bleeds from exterior to interior. And these are some of our, the worlds we're creating. We also want to increase density and go high and have towers participate. And this is a series of individual towers. But we want these towers not only to be complex and differentiated, uh, but we want them also to be ordered into swarms, fields, clusters, as size increases, complexity increases, and we're thinking of building systems of, of dense city towers, uh, which are which are ordered with an accent, with an axis, more, uh, and rather than a random uh, scatter like you find in Manhattan. And so this is one of our projects in Beijing, and very important that there's the 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 intricacy of finding your way and of having deep vistas and seeing many things come together visually is also continuing on the interior. So most of our towers would have atria. And so you can move up and see what happens on different levels. You can keep visual contact to the exterior, like this, so you know where you are in the city. And these are the kind of towers we're developing. This is a tower in, in the central bank of Iraq, for instance, which is oriented towards the river with an open navigation void, which ch changes its exterior based on the different sun shading requirements, so it gives identity to the tower, so as you move around it's very, very different, so it tells you am I north of the tower, south of the tower, west or east of the tower, and you still know it is the tower, then I move in and I come through the horizontal to vertical continuous navigation space, I always see where I'm going and, and can orient and orient back in the city. So these are some of the towers, City of Dreams in Macau, where we have this kind of atrium hollowing out and bringing into visual space of connect, connection uh, all the participants and the latest uh, design for an office tower in, in, in Beijing with a 200 meter atrium and again there's a whole world where you see what everybody else is doing, what's going on and what's going on outside and that's my vision of this kind of complex and int intricately and well developed uh, space which, 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 which rate and, and the logic and style, stylistic repertoire which, which, uh, which has this, the print based on the analogy with, with nature, and is for the first time after a series that is of decline in order, it finally able in this my name for this style parametricism, to have a positive correlation between freedom and order. So we we are uh, before we had an increase in degrees of freedom of making space and allowing the contingencies of society to manifest in the built environment. Uh, in the last 300 years, degrading the order. And finally, we found a way for these new technologies and intelligences of setting up algorithms, self-organizing uh, evolutionary principles to have f finally a coincidence of order and freedom. And that's my idea of a free market urban order. Thank you.